Hey everyone, I'm Nancy Chandan, a graduate student in Smirka Lab at the University of Michigan. Today I'll be telling you a story where we identified PDZ rogef as a novel target of G-protein alpha I. There are four families of G-alpha subunits. My thesis work is focused on G-alpha I, which inhibits adenylyl cyclase. One of the processes with GI couple GPCRs mediate is chemotactic signaling. The activation of the receptor by chemokine leads to release of G-alpha I and G-beta gamma. And this activated G-beta gamma can activate multiple effectors which can regulate cell adhesion, polarization and migration. But many studies conclude that G-alpha I doesn't play a role in chemokine signaling other than to regulate release of G-beta gamma, which really isn't the case. Multiple reports from our lab showed that G alpha I GTP that is activated G alpha I is required for chemotactin dependent cell migration. But we still don't know what does G alpha I directly regulates to perform all these functions. To identify effectors of G alpha I, I'm using proximity based labeling approach using BioID enzyme. BioID is a promiscuous biotin ligase enzyme which uses biotin and ATP and generates activated biotin which gets attached to the proteins in proximity, proteins which are in less than 20 nanometer radius. These biotin-related proteins then are separated by streptavidin pull-down and then identified by mass spec. The labeling process can label a lot of proteins in surrounding. So to identify real interactors from the background, using these three groups where BioID is fused with GL51 wild type, inactive GL51 QL, constitutively active and membrane-targeted BioID. We're looking for the proteins which are differentially enriched in this active form of GL5 as compared to wild type and CACs. Eschicanity fibrosarcoma cells were transfected with either GL5 and wild type or QL and then they were labeled for 24 hours and then after the labeling the cells were lysed and the vitilated proteins were pulled down by streptavidin and submitted for mass spec. If we look at the mass spec data represented by Volcano plot, proteins on the right are enriched in QL samples as compared to wild type. The protein which I'm investigating is PDZ ROCAF, which is enriched in QL samples as compared to wild type and CACs. PDZ ROCAF is a guanine exchange factor for Rho, which means activates Rho, and activated Rho is involved in cytoskeleton reorganization and cell adhesion migration. We wanted to investigate if G alpha I can activate PDZ ROCAF in SRE luciferase reporter assay. So the cells which had PDZ ROGF, an active form of G alpha I, those cells only could increase luciferase reporter activity to 80 fold, but not inactive G alpha I. So, this is the first evidence which shows that G alpha I can regulate Rho through PDZ ROGF. Next, we investigated three isoforms of G alpha I, I1, 2, and 3. They are known to inhibit adenylyl cyclase to a similar extent. But in this luciferase reporter assay, G alpha I could not activate PD0 GF at all, though it was expressed equally to G alpha I1 and 2. G alpha I3 activated PD0 GF, but not at the same extent as G alpha I1. So this shows that activation of PD0 GF is selective for G alpha I1 and 3. Currently, we are investigating which amino acids confer specificity to these isoforms. This data suggests that these isoforms are indeed functionally different. So we saw that PDC ROCAF is a novel effector of G-alpha I and G-alpha I positively regulates it. So it won't be fair to call G-alpha I inhibitory. So let's say we'll call it important. So if you want to know more about this project, feel free to check out my full talk. Thank you for your time. See you then.